and leave us alone. Now what she spotted now, she almost seems as though she's found something. Pretty sure she's gonna go up this mound as well. There we go. So you can see she's able to climb right now. She's not doing too badly. I'm gonna try and get myself around onto the other side of her. Again with maybe the sunset, although I think she's a bit high for the sunset to be honest. She's stalking something that's in the grass here. I don't see anything, but she's almost looking right at us. Look at that. Look at how she's gone into a different mode. What have you seen? I don't see anything, Shadow, and I'm right here. Where she's looking is literally, I, it must be a meter away from me in front of the car, but I can't see anything. Super interesting. But look at how she's poised. Look at that front leg just slightly lifted. She's focused. Look, she's just putting the paw down slowly. And she's bent in almost like an S shape, staring straight towards where we are. So I have no idea. I can't see anything. Maybe there's a little Franklin. What's that? Did I see something moving there? No, I can't see anything. But she's definitely watching something that is fairly close by. So I, what it is, I'm not sure. Maybe there's a little Steenbock or Diker that's hidden in the grass. And from our angle, we can't see it. Remember, she is higher than what I am. And so she could maybe spot something that I can't see. But definitely intent on something. And she's stalking. She's low. She's trying to keep her body down as much as possible and keep her sort of noise level down as well. But look at how beautiful that is with the sun in the background. Her up on a big termite mound and there's a ridiculously good sunset unfortunately we're probably going to miss it because i want to stay on shadow while she's still stalking like this what have you seen shadow i'm not going to move at all because whatever it is i don't want to disturb it but it seems as though it's right in front of my car and i honestly cannot see a single thing oh there i can see it so look in the grass here sensor so in this grass on my right hand side just hidden is what looks like a diker. So if you follow my finger sensor, I'll show you. Just to the left of this tree, at the back there, where my finger is there, is a diker. Now, it's very difficult to see it. There it is. You can see its ears just poking out through. Is it a diker? I can't see it nicely. Or is it a stump? It looks like something there. No, it's a stump, is it? Yes, it is a stump. Sorry, I thought that was a diker. I thought I saw some movement there. But it is a stump. Sorry, sensor, my fault. But it looked like a diker, and it looked like movement. The grass is just moving a little bit, but that's what I thought she was staring at. It's in the right kind of direction for the way that she's staring. So that's what I thought she was looking at, but obviously not. Oh, it's a scrub here. Dryden, you're saying, do you think she's ignoring dikers because they too fast for her and she's lame at the moment no i think it's just a fact that she's just looking for something that's easier to hunt there's a scrub here is what she's actually hunting i can see it now it's right here next to the tree so she is hunting a scrub here which is on the other side of this thicket so where she's going now towards there is where the scrub here is so i don't want to move because the scrub here might bolt if i move but the scrub here is just on my right hand side where she's going she's got to come around now through a tree area and then the scrub here was on the other side of that tree so it's going to be difficult for her to get there but she is going to go into stalk mode she's going to go very quietly now and she's going to have to tiptoe because this rabbit or scrub here should i say not a rabbit naughty tristan is that very aware that something's up it's alert its ears are up it's looking around and so she's going to have to try and now watch and just move slowly and quietly and sneak her way to a proximity that she can stalk we saw this with hosanna the other day how he edged his way closer slowly but surely trying to get towards her and hopefully shadow is going to be the same so let's see how she goes but she's edging her way slowly 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 look how she's just watching head is looking she doesn't need to be as camouflaged with this as something like a diker or a impala because at the end of the day the scrub is so low in the grass that it, the field of vision is very slim because of all the grass moving around it it relies on its hearing a lot more than something like a dike or a steenbok or an impala so she can afford to be upright and quite high up but as she gets closer you'll find she'll get lower and that crouch will become more sort of of a stalk and more similar to what we saw from Hosanna than what we're seeing now unfortunately she is going to go behind a really thick bush in order to get closer but look at how she's moving that back foot gently slowly 
just trying to touch it down, just trying to make as little noise as possible, not to alert the scrub here to her presence, and she's going to slowly push her way forward and try and get a little closer. The thing about scrub hairs is that they do have very good vision, and I mean very good um, hearing, and their vision is not too bad, particularly as it gets darker. So she's going to just have to be patient and slow and steady, but I'm sure in her lifetime she must have ended a number of different scrub hairs lives, so she'll know the technique, she'll know how to do this, and know how to be able to hunt them, so it's going to be interesting just to watch her as she moves around, and I would love to know what her success rate with scrub hairs is. I've seen Shadow on at least 9 or 10 different scrub hair kills, so it's obviously something she actively partakes in hunting, and so I would be interested to know just how many she's hunted in her time, and how many, and what her success rate in percentage is between that and maybe something like Daiko or Stian Mok or Impala, and maybe that's why she targets them, maybe she's figured out a much better way of doing things. You can see, look, she's just behind the bush now. She's gone a lot lower already, and she's slowly but surely creeping her way forward. Unfortunately for us, we're going to have a lot of bush in our way as she goes round it, and I can't move any further than what I am now because that scrub hair might just get a fright and run. That scrub hair, at the end of the day, like I said, knows something's up and knows something's going on, so we want to try and give it, it everybody the best possible chance to survive or to be, you know, to hunt, and so. And so we try and, and not interfere as much as possible. And I know a lot of you are wondering how our vehicles here would affect something like this. Well, in this situation, when we sit still and we don't move, the scrub here, I can see it, it's grooming itself. It's not making any movement. It's literally just rubbing its ears and having a little nibble on some grass. So it doesn't know shadows there. We're not between the scrub hair and shadow, and therefore we're not protecting either one of them or hiding the other one. We're just sitting and we're waiting patiently and we're allowing it to play out. And that's why we won't start the car, because a noise will disrupt both of them and that will run away. So as soon as we see an animal go into stalk mode, we try and keep ourselves as sort of non-obtrusive as possible, or non-intrusive should I say, and we try and kind of keep ourselves still and not move around too much, not try and create too much movement around both animals. We would also, if it was at night, we would make sure no lights were on. We'd try and keep it as sort of natural as possible and leave nature to take care of itself. Obviously that's also why I'm speaking in a much lower tone than maybe I would normally as I'm trying to keep my voice down. I don't want to have a situation where I'm distracting either party from what they're doing. At the end of the day, it's a battle of survival. One animal is desperate to eat, the other animal is desperate to survive, and so we don't want to give an unfair advantage to either one of those. It's completely unethical to do so, so we're going to try and be as patient as possible. It means sometimes we don't have the best view of them, as in a case like this, as they're stalking along, and you know, we just have to be patient and wait and just be sort of quiet about what we're doing and, and allow nature to take its course. So. In a situation like this, we're probably perfectly all right. We have a situation where everybody's quiet, everybody's taking it nice and easy, and so we should be just fine in terms of not interfering in any way. But look at the focus. You can see she is completely focused on that scrub hair. She's watching, she's listening, her ears are not moving at all. You can see her ears are focused straight forward as to where she's looking, and the scrub hair is looking away from her at the moment. So the scrub hair's got its back to her, which is what she wants. She needs to be able to move slowly and try and edge closer towards that scrub hair without giving it any sort of visual. And she'll have to get probably maybe another, I would say, should need to get another five or six meters in front. So the scrub here currently is just somewhere in this general vicinity underneath this tall tree in the background. So that's where she wants to kind of head her way to and try and sort of stalk to. So it's going to take a little bit of time and she'll probably have to close the gap to at least half of what it is now before she would have any real possibility. We saw the other day with Hosanna, even at a close proximity that he was, he missed that little scrub here. So, you know, it's it's difficult for them. Scrub ears are fleet-footed, they're fast animals, and so they've got to get really close and then ambush them with a quick leap up and onto the scrub here and hope that they then grab it. So. I'm pretty sure Shadow knows though, she's sitting now, so she's conserving energy, she's not in a position where she's holding a crouch pattern, where she's going to start getting muscle fatigue, she's sitting down, her bum is down on the ground, and she's just waiting to see which way is going to be better, and I think what she's hoping is that the scrub here goes into deeper grass, that is a little bit more difficult for her to be spotted. And that's when she'll start moving. At the moment, she's got very little cover between where she is and where the scrub hair is, and, and that's going to make it difficult for her to get any closer than where she currently is now. 
but it now becomes the waiting game and leopards are patient animals i've seen leopards sit as we know with them Vula. he once sat for almost 24 hours at a warthog hole waiting so they can be very patient and they can take a long 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 long, long time to hunt they tend to be a much sort of more patient than any of the other predators that we see so we know wild dogs lion and even cheetah tend to stalk chase and move quite quickly whereas with these guys is that they will play the patience game they will slowly edge their way they'll slowly move if they have to until they get in striking distance and are able to then get to what they want so this could take five minutes it could take 10 minutes it could take an hour it could take maybe even two hours it just depends on how shadow goes about it and how she kind of positions herself and whether or not the scrub hair sees her at the end of the day she's going to try and stalk there without it if the scrub hair does see her we're going to have a situation that she's not going to be able to probably follow um senzo maybe you might see it uh no if you go a little bit up from there so just to the left of that there you can just see its backside there it is straight in the sort of the left of that big trunk it's there in the background there somewhere it's more towards the back senzo more towards the back left Oh, Laura you say their patience is incredible. I think Senzo, unfortunately, is at a bad angle to see it, but it's it's behind that stump, that tree trunk that we can see in that frame. So a little bit to the back left of that is where this scrub here is sitting. Somewhere there is where it is. I don't know if we can find it in, in that. There's so many branches in between, but that's where it's sitting. I think unfortunately Senzo is not in a good place for it but they are incredibly patient animals I mean Shadow is the whole afternoon she's been after things also it's starting to get darker which means it's starting to get a little bit better for her the darker it gets the more she can sneak around without being noticed it's still quite light the scrub has got big eyes like I said big ears and it's able then to pick up movement around it but as it gets darker it becomes much more into Shadow's favor and she's maybe that's why she's just sitting tight waiting a little bit hoping that the scrub here maybe just moves into a little bit more thick area that she can then try and follow without being seen at the moment it's difficult for her now the scrub here is still sitting there I can still see it it's just got little pink ears and like I say Senzo you're gonna really battle to find it you won't be able to see it it's quite difficult it's sort of in and under where Senzo was looking but maybe I don't know it might be possible so somewhere there it's just too thick and the problem is for the camera to get focus in all of that is so difficult but that is exactly where the scrub air is in that general vicinity maybe just try going a little bit more to the left sensor behind there no no you won't be able to see it cat yes it is true that uh, shadow was originally named Tink well okay so there is two schools of thought here because she did have the name Tingana it's not that she was originally named it what happened was here in the northern parts of the reserve so Juma, Bufazok, Torchwood, those guys and Cheetah Plains they named her Tingana and Tandi um, Saseka and the guys in the western side so Arethusa, Elephant Plains, Chitwa um, and Koro those guys named them Tandi and Shadow and the reason why is because Saseka was a the mother of Salahesh and so the guys said well we've already got a Saseka we can't have another Saseka and so they called Tandi Tandi and they moved away from Saseka Shadow was called Tingana for a while and then what happened was she was changed it was accepted that her name must change to Shadow because Tingana the male arrived and we couldn't have two Tinganas and so that's kind of how it happened but the guys up north here referred to them as um, Tingana and Saseka and the guys into the west and south of us referred to them as Tato, Tandi and Shadow even from the beginning so it was just a bit of miscommunication and, and that's why things kind of changed but you can see look how low she is now she's down she's sitting she's crouching and watching what's going on she's really got herself as low as possible now and she's kind of going to have to leopard crawl her way as we saw with Hosanna the other day so for those of you that missed it leopards have a, a little bit of a floating collarbone which means that they can push their whole body down and just their legs will stay up and they can then scrape their body along as they kind of crawl their way forward and that's where leopard crawl comes from as people we know of the, the word leopard crawl and that's where it comes from and they'll try and kind of keep their body down as low as possible and then just slink their way almost slithering if you want to call it that towards 
this scrub hair but she is as low as she possibly can be she's although she's gone into a bit more of a relaxed position now she doesn't look as though she's got her paws too far forward and it does look like her eyes are even closing as well shadow are you falling asleep while watching her scrub hair really no there we go she's attentive again scrub hair still sitting exactly in the same place it really hasn't moved at all so it's still in that exact area and if the scrub hair moves she'll be able to pick it up from this distance with her ears also we know she spotted it as soon as she came over that mound she saw that scrub hair with, in about two seconds it didn't take her long to spot it so I'm pretty sure she can still see it but you might find that she does just take a bit of a rest and as soon as the scrub hair moves she then moves as well now I see the scrub hair is feeding now it's just starting to kind of feed and groom itself and that's maybe why she's perked herself up a little bit and become a lot more attentive one real human you say wow what incredible camouflage well it is I mean that's zoomed in fully so if we come back a little bit keep coming Senzo keep coming keep coming there we go try spot that that is really not easy to see at all her spotted coat in amongst thicket like that is pretty much invisible you, you really don't see much of a leopard in that image at all I certainly can't on my little monitor I don't know about you guys at home on your screens but I don't see very much at all so their camouflage is absolutely unbelievable and it's why we often drive past leopards like I say it's, it's common for us to miss them completely and if their tail isn't up or they're not head up and they crouching down you can bet that you can miss a leopard a lot of times so it's an incredible camouflage and, and one that has to be the case because ultimately remember they are ambush predators and if they don't have camouflage there's very little chance that they're going to get the food that they need they don't have the speed that you'll see of something like a cheetah or a lion even they're slower than lions or wild dogs and so they've got to be able to really get close and to get close you've got to be able to conceal yourself in plain sight and so that's why a leopard's camouflage is as good as it is and why they're able to blend the way that they are but the scrub is still just sitting still taking it easy it's not really moving around Senzo, you might be able to see its head bobbing up and down now. It's, it's sat a lot more upright than what it was earlier. So it's possible that Senzo might be able to pick it up just there, Senzo. So it will be somewhere under that kind of... There, it's moving now. It's just moving off to the left. So it's going to be probably more difficult for you to see because now even I'm battling to see it from where I am. But you can see she's up now. She's she's moving look you see she's now starting to stalk again the scrub hair moved so she's moving and this is how it's going to go it's just kind of a ping pong game a little bit she's going to want to position herself and hopefully that scrub hair is going to walk towards her so every time the scrub hair moves she moves now see the scrub hair is coming out now since now you'll be able to see it quite clearly it's going to come out into a gap here so there it is just there you can see its ears just wobbling around moving in that direction there it comes slowly emerging and so we'll keep on the scrub hair for now because as the scrub hair starts to come out so shadow will then have a thicket to work with and be able to pounce now that scrub has got no idea i mean it's busy eating it's got no clue that there's a leopard in sight and a leopard close by and it's just busy eating its dinner and starting off its nocturnal movements and that's why they head towards roads because it's so easy for them to be hunted in places like this and so that's why the scrubby will start to head towards roads a little chomp on some tree and some foliage and that's where the scrubby is and then shadow on that side so shadow i think his best bet is to come through here my girl I'm going the wrong way but look at how she's watching now she's trying to see over the grass where's this little scrub hair gone and she's now trying to work her way around and get a little bit closer towards the back and you see how she's trying to hunt from behind the scrub air she's trying to move her way around get in behind where the back end of the scrub air is and slowly but surely move her way forward once she gets there right behind it then you'll see a big spring much like you see where I'm a serval in that way look at how her paw goes look how amazing is that you see how she's tentative she says no nope, that's not the right place as soon as she meets a little bit of resistance with her paw she'll stop moving it she does she knows if she touches something that's going to make a noise and so she'll stop 
The scrub hair is still right where it was. It hasn't moved too much. It's a little bit more in the open now and sitting out. So there we go. There's the scrub hair. A little bit more out in the open. Better for us. And Judy, you saying, take your time, Shadow. No need to rush. Exactly. There isn't any need to rush. We've still got lots of time. And so I'm pretty sure Shadow can just slowly meander away closer, work her way closer, and if she can just get into this thicket, maybe that scrub here will even feed straight towards her and she'll be able to then hunt it from there. So she's just kind of working out which way she needs to go and she's a little bit undecided. She can kind of putting a foot forward and then she takes it back again. I think she's trying to see if maybe the scrub here moves the, in a different way that she can then cut it off somewhere and lie and wait for it and hopefully the scrub here then comes right towards her. That would be ideal obviously for her situation is if the scrub here walked right into her direction you can see she's just watching and seeing and working out which way she's going to go it's impressive though that the patience that they exercise still just watching and the scrub here is now facing towards her direction and is quite upright so her movement now will be quite easy to see so she needs to be patient and you'll find once the scrub hair turns like it has now you might find her moving so you see the scrub hair turned and his back is to shadow now so she can now start to think about moving look at the tail starting to twitch <laughs> don't let your tail give you away sometimes it's almost like the tail is too, too excited for the body and it gives a leopard away it kind of starts twitching long before it should be twitching and <laughs> they get seen so Shadow, you'll have to control your little tail. And there's the scrub bear. You can see he's feeding quite upright and facing a little bit towards Shadow. That's why she'll have stopped again. But it's a fairly good meal for any leopard. It's, even though it's small, it's still, it's still good nutrients. And Kathy, you were saying exactly the same thing. Even though it's small, it's still our girl needs a good meal. And exactly that. That's the thing with these animals is is that it might be small but it's nutrients and and for a smallish leopard like shadow or tumba or hosanna it definitely is going to fill the gap for at least a day and it will make them not feel as hungry so perfect thing to be able to hunt and to be able to try and go after so for her it is is a, a an easier meal it's easier to come part come upon them and to be able to kind of stalk them it doesn't take nearly as much energy as something like an impala so she can afford to hunt these more often and, and again they're more common so she'll come across them fairly regularly and it's good nutrients we saw the other day with tumba with his and we've seen her like i say with quite a few now that the scrub here just bounced and so she's now looking very intently i still think her best bet is to come between us in this thicket through this little thicket and sit on the left side of this tree and hope that the scrub bear starts moving but the scrub bear's now gone into long grass so i think shadow is going to make a move now i don't think she's going to stay where she is for too much longer you can see she's still watching now i wonder where she's going to go from here on the edge of your seat stuff it's it's amazing just to watch the calculated nature of an of a leopard and how it sits and watches and, and plans to execute the the way that it's going to move ryan the leopard is not exactly downwind but the wind is blowing from sort of a northeast to a northwest so it's coming across from my right to left so basically the same for the scrub here and the leopard is right to left so the the scent theoretically shouldn't blow towards that scrub here um hopefully i mean obviously it can swirl around a little bit and there can be a bit of movement but it theoretically should come from right to left and shouldn't interfere in this particular hunt i've lost the scrub here completely now i can't see it anymore it's, it's drifted into that very long grass patch Oh, can you see it still, Senzo? Okay. So it's in the long grass patch now, which I can't see, but I think Shadow's best bet is to come back towards us and then snake her way through this thicket and get herself into a position where she can then go towards that long grass, or she could just decide to go that way. still think her best bet is this way, but anyway. There she goes. She's just going to ghost her way along. And I can promise you, sitting here, that there is not a single sound being made by this leopard. I have not heard her. 
I have not heard her walking. She is silent, 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 silent. I can hear the scrub hair more than I can hear Shadow, even though Shadow is way bigger than what that scrub hair is. It is absolutely amazing how silent they are when they want to be and how they just stalk slowly and quietly through these areas. Shadow, even though Shadow is way bigger than what that scrub air is. It is absolutely amazing how silent they are when they want to be and how they just stalk slowly and quietly through these areas. I'm not sure she's going the right way, to be honest. I think she's heading completely the wrong direction, unfortunately, because she's taking herself into a more open patch. I suppose I can't really see what's behind this tree. Maybe she can see a path that I can't that is far more concealed, but to me, where we are now seems to be a lot better. Or even use the termite mound that we've got on our left hand side, and you stalk along that termite mound towards the scrub air would seem to me to be a better way of doing things. But then again, I'm not a leopard, I've never hunted a scrub here, and so I might be completely wrong. She seems as though she's now wandering off a little bit. So, Barbara, the difference between a hare and a rabbit is scrub hares come out at night. So they are animals that spend their time out at night. Longer ears, longer legs, give birth to young that are able to move around straight away and are given, they give birth to them in basically dusty little hollows under a tree. Whereas a rabbit, diurnal, shorter ears, shorter legs, hops rather than runs and spends its time in a burrow where it will give birth to young that is not able to move around and is very reliant on its parents. So slightly different in the way that those two animals work. Uh, she is moving to a place where we won't be able to see her. I can't see the scrub here either. So we're going to sit tight and just wait. Rex is moving a little bit just to try and keep view of her because we don't want her to drift off. Sometimes leopards do this. Sometimes they get to a point where they've watched, they've seen, and they realize, well, there's not really a chance for me to hunt this, and they might then move off out of that area. So we'll just see. I have seen it before where they've stalked for half an hour, and then they just decide, no, it's not worth it, and off they go and carry on. So I'm going to just sit here and see if she starts snaking her way back. Rex is going to stay with her exactly oh, here she comes here she comes Senzo, look she's gonna come out and she's moving quickly now and is low to the ground so she's just behind that thicket slowly but surely moving down towards the scrub here now and it's getting dark and dingy and the perfect light for her to do so it's also getting a lot colder now but there she comes see her look she's walking a lot faster there she goes no unfortunately for her that is Amos Sorry, my girl. You can see how fast that scrub hair is. She tried, though. She tried her very best, and she, unfortunately, she just overcooked it a little bit. If she had just slowed up towards that thicket and sat, she might have been a lot better off. If she had just showed that patience there, we would have had a situation where we might have actually seen her grabbing that scrub hair. But nonetheless, interesting and certainly very riveting to watch. I thoroughly enjoyed every little second of that. I hope